so good evening everyone um, i hope uh, all of you have joined here and for those for those of you who have not joined uh, i hope they join us as well uh, i am aditya shekhar uh, i take care of get set law uh, pan india and we are here to discuss a very interesting topic uh, of uh, whatsapp privacy laws now the uh, uh, basic title uh is uh, with respect to the social media laws which are currently at state and how its regulation uh, and how uh, everything related to it affects uh, gen uh, you know uh, in general all of us uh, is the basic uh, 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 intention of the uh, session uh the session comes under a very interesting series which is insight which showcases how the life at a law school happens so we bring professors we bring uh, students from the universities to tell us exactly how you would feel to get into one of the elite uh, law universities so we have a very famous uh, professor here pulkit mogra from ups uh, uh, dehradun uh, he is assistant professor there who has joined us uh, he will be teaching us whatsapp privacy policy laws is it a threat is it a boon is it a bane all of it he will be covering in the session so welcome to the show pulkit hope you are staying safe and sound thank you aditya thank you so much right uh, before we begin i would go ahead and introduce pulkit to all of you uh, pulkit is basically a jindal global law school uh, graduate uh, post that he went to do his llm in law and technology from tel aviv university in israel imagine that the israel palestine event happening and you are studying there seeing uh, uh, you, you know history uh, this is probably an area or probably a zone which uh, is riffled with uh, uh, you know uh, a lot of controversies a lot of uh, warfare to study there itself would have been definitely an experience so he did that and then uh, of course he uh, went on to become a professor with ups right now he is also going to do his is uh, uh, uh from the university of uh, 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 toronto uh, in uh, data in privacy laws only so, yeah 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 so that way is uh, of course uh, he is uh, one of the few people who is extremely interested in technology laws and knows a lot about uh, how uh, uh, you know general uh, people uh, uh, are supposed to deal with it so uh, i would before uh, uh, you know uh, sort of inviting you to teach uh, the uh, uh, students here i would like to know how was it, your experience uh, at jindal global law school uh, so how was your college days like how were your friends how was the academia how was the infrastructure all of it uh, yeah so i joined jindal law school in 2011 and law school itself started in 2009 so we were actually the third batch and when we entered into the law school of jindal it was quite new to the world people were quite apprehensive about whether they, we should go in or not there were huge number of talks that this law school will be closed in the next few years and we were taking a chance we were a bunch of like 160 students who took an ad admission and in the whole 80 acres of land there were some 300 students out there right. and we have seen jindal being built how it was being built right from the infrastructure to what it is today Right. from 300 students to seeing 17 to seeing 11 or 12000 students right now it's been one such of a journey and my college days they were i would say they were quite good because when you are a bunch of 300 students studying right there you are building the whole university by yourself right. um, and along with that the kind of bonding that you get along with not just with your own batch with your seniors with your uh, juniors immediate juniors it's kind of a family that you create and that is something we bunch of 500 600 people who have been my next two batches and plus plus two batches of mine we have been quite bonded together and we have a kind of a relationship i would say that we still are quite connected and you tell, take our names and everyone would know everyone on on their tips because they were such a quite bunch of people and teaching in jindal law just to just to break you in between don't yeah. you think that's that's what happens across india in every law university uh, i have not seen a university in which a batch does not knows uh, who is there in their batch by their name so it 
probably is a uh, you know a very important factor which exists only in law universities ki bhai aapke batch mein jo bhi hai aapko by face and by name you know that you know them uh, yes i would say yes in law school the, one of the reason is that there is a lot of interaction that happens among students in law school compared to i would say uh, in other courses uh, because uh, the kind of mooting and debating and kind of a uh, one on one challenges that you face along with your batchmates is a quite unique quality of a law school because law school right. it not just prepares right. you just with legal studies law school works with right with your all five senses together it te- it teaches you reading right. it teaches you speaking it teaches you how to be visible how to take care of your surroundings and how to use your sixth sense as well so that right. is a one quality of a law school that makes you remember people right. around you are. and how was your how was your experience in tel aviv university is the, the name itself sounds pretty fancy so how was your experience there one of those i would say one of the life changing experiences i would say because uh, what i went expecting what I, i got far more than that what i expected because the culture of israel what we hear about is only israel palestine conflict but uh, behind that there lies a huge technological based ecosystem of israel and which it's a small country of 300 kilometers long 170 kilometers in breadth and it is one country which which is actually valuing dollars at 11 11 shekels so think right. of a small country and their economy and along with that the kind of defense technologies that they built in so if anyone is interested in tech law or stuff either it's the united states or israel these are the two of the pioneers um uh, right now in the uh, tech law and kind of the faculty faculty we got in tel aviv university was incredible because we got right from the startup founders we got right from the senior professors and obviously israel palestine conflict everyone would get a chance to view it right from the language yeah, of course of course that is the uh, yeah. primary thing which you, you would have uh, witnessed yeah. also how did you get into tel aviv university how did you get to know about this course and uh, how was the entry like yeah uh, so uh, about this course i uh, i was pretty much interested in about tech law first of all and when i was doing my search because for this you have to do a quite an extensive search first of all on what are the different tech law schools are available in the in the, in the world and secondly what are your interest are because you don't enter into a masters thinking of that okay i'll go there and explore things just by a broad name of a university or a broad field area you need to know what exactly you are going for and why you are going for i was pretty much clear about when i was stepping into tel aviv university that i want to land up into academics at some point and secondly where into academics was the data privacy because that was one of the issue that was coming up in india and i knew that by the time i will land up back in india this will go on to surge okay and that exactly that has happened and th- through this i i, I just wrote to universities different universities i didn't rely on any other mode of communication i started communicating with them and i got those responses i wrote my essay through the email through the yeah. email sorry yeah yeah through the email. okay yeah. amazing amazing yeah it, it took me few months it was because you need a lot of patience because whether it's a masters it took me 3 3 and a half months to do the, to do this kind of conversation whether it it was my phd it has taken me a period of 7 months to get it right. and it was masters it took me 3 months but slow and steadily process do happens and then this is how you get it super super so without uh, wasting uh, any further time uh, 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 i would like you to invite uh, to speak about uh, the whatsapp new privacy policy is it a threat is it a boon is it a bane uh, for those of you guys who have joined us right now pulkit is currently a professor at ups dehradun and uh, he has done his law from jindal global law school uh, he is a 2016 uh, pass out and uh, later on he went on to do his masters in technology law from tel aviv university israel uh, he will be pursuing his doctorate Uh, which is again in data uh, laws if i'm not wrong data yeah 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 and this is university of ontario which we are talking otago 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 okay great great so from there he will be pursuing his phd so the floor is yours uh, pulkit i wish you all the best Thank and uh, we will be taking up the questions once you are done with the uh, session so guys uh, hold on to your questions uh, pulkit will be uh, talking and uh, discussing the topic and once he is done we will be uh, taking the uh, questions from you harsh is done he will be joining uh, university of ottawa 
right all right pulkit all the best okay thank you uh, i'll i'll be sharing a ppt okay and you can watch along the ppt around and if you have any questions you can keep it keep it along with you and over the period of time i'll take all your questions as well okay uh, so before we start uh, first thing about whatsapp and new privacy policy a basic thing that i uh, i as a student when i was 17 18 19 years old i had few questions about what does this privacy term means and it took me couple of years to actually figure it out before someone actually sat along with me and he told me that see this is what privacy means because for me in a, in layman's term privacy just mean me my room and someone if someone is entering into it then they should either ask me or they should knock knock that's all so but when it comes to data privacy it's a far more bigger land along with that and this is a uh, this is an age where data privacy becomes pretty much stronger a need of a need of an hour okay so before with we start with this one uh, i want to tell you one thing that why privacy matters okay because uh, whenever we talk about privacy if you'll ask any layman persons uh, along with that uh, they will al always say that see there is no real harm that comes uh, whenever for example if someone is breaching your privacy as well say someone is doing a surveillance on you uh, or if a mass surveillance is happening people will always say that see there is no such real harm that is coming in unless and until you are doing something wrong okay so unless and un until you are not doing something wrong why are you scared of so this uh, world had the, have this particular kind of view which divide people into two categories that you can see and that is one is the good people and and second one is the bad people so good people do what they are supposed to do they have, they'll pay taxes they'll not indulge into any crime and bad people would do that what like planning out the murders or committing any crimes and this is how you can take a simple distinction between good people and bad people okay and then the simple analogy is that good people have no fear of government harming them in any ways and if you see that what google thinks about it what google ceo said a few years ago in 2009 uh, he said that see if you are doing something you don't want other people to know then you should not be doing that at first first place and that was a reasoning by google and that was quite astonishing that google saying this particular thing google ceo saying this in 2009 but it was back then in 2009 so eric smith was the name of the person but it was a it was a hilarious moment after that when eric smith he ordered his particular employees to stop using particular website of cnet because it was publishing some of the article which was full of the private life of its uh, of its own ceo saying that this is what it does and it was giving the simple reasoning that see if you are not doing something bad at your end then why do you fear your data is being leaked and then uh, comes your uh, very famous mark zuckerberg in 2010 in an interview he comes and says that see privacy is no longer a social norm and post that mark zuckerberg has been one of the leaders who have, who have been quite an advocate of of data privacy after the cambridge analytica scandal as well in which it was alleged that facebook has leaked information during the election of united states if you if i have to quote the donald trump's elections okay that i'll tell you a little bit more about this and if the data privacy doesn't matter to us and if, if we are using this concept that good people are not supposed to hide anything and it is only a concern of the bad people that i would give you an exercise okay ask your friends to give you passwords of your email i have been trying it from quite a few years Till today, I have not received any one single email from my friend that see, this is my ID and password. I don't do anything wrong, but still keep my ID and password. Okay. And this is one of the reason I want to tell you that why data privacy is important because humans are social animals. And even do, even though we do publish all our information online through Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Signal, Telegram, whatever mode of communication it is, but even though we have some of the things that we want to hide we don't want all the things for the world to know about it okay because uh, it has been linked to behavior your behavior drastically changes when you know that you are being watched in a public space or be it a religion space or whatever so 
human shame is one of the quite powerful motivator for people to act differently and this is exactly becomes a quite a norm of a data privacy okay why data privacy matters is because your it can redirect your you to behave in one particular way and this realization that i am tell, telling you right now was exploited uh, very powerfully by a professor called jeremy bentham uh, when he came up with a solution in 18th century with a very simple architectural design okay and the problem they were facing was an industrial age in, two, in, in 18th century uh, was to govern a, a large organization and it was not at all easy how to control the workforce and especially when it comes to jails and prisons and then he built up one particular design which was which was called uh, panoption panoption yeah panoption panopticon design panopticon design the idea of the design was that uh they built a tower in the center of every single in, uh, institution where inmates were not able to see what was happening in the tower but every person sitting in the tower could very clearly see that what what every single inmate is doing and he built it in one particular way now he was so excited about the same that uh he announced this to prisoners and suddenly it was seen that prisoners attitude changed about how they were uh, how they were working along in the prisons they were conscious all the time they were obedient they were complying with the rules and this is how it it, it started happening similarly then came michel foucault michel foucault foucault is another uh, jurisprudence expert on the same and he he came up with this idea that let's apply every single norm of jeremy bentham into schools colleges societies and let's do uh, a mass surveillance because that mass surveillance is going to create a prison in your mind okay now you're creating a prison into your mind remember who are these prisons were created for these prisons were created for remember the good and bad concept people who are doing bad stuff they are supposed to be into prisons okay over over and above all of this uh society's obedience can be one of the view but at the same time also remember that it can terribly cripple down the room for your dissenting opinion human freedom idea of thought in particular manner and a confidentiality of a of any conversation between two people and and this is where the importance of privacy comes in so anyone if uh, someone ask you about why privacy matters this is one of the reason and if you want to uh, have an indian example of data privacy is i'll tell you how how it comes in so in 2018 there were some protests were happening in uttar pradesh and there were quite number of farmers who were actually working on potatoes and they started dumping potatoes outside the government government official houses and next day when all these government officials woke up they were finding potatoes lying uh, right right outside their doors and they got really angry about how how come uh, people can do this to us and they tracked 10000 phones to investigate it like who were these who were these bunch of 10 or 12 people who did this stuff so see how would you feel if something that happens to you under under the name of surveillance and that some 10000 people uh, got surveillance and people were listening about what conversations were happening similar thing happened in andhra pradesh where a government uh, website by mistake they declared some of the private information of their own citizens and the information was about the use of uh, medicines that people were doing along with their names and details and these medicines included all kinds of medicines whether they were private medicines they were public medicines or whatever kind of medicines were which were basically shaming around the people the data was leaked this is how privacy was violated in last 3 4 years you must have heard about the aadhaar card how easy it is for aadhaar card uh, to be hacked and where all our detail, details are going in is aadhaar card even safe to link it with pan card whether we should link our aadhaar card with uh, phone numbers or not and this was one of the reason uh, aadhaar card was tracked into this code and where the government came up the judgment that see uh not the government came up with a judgment government came up with an argument saying that see privacy is not a fundamental right and your these names and numbers if they are even getting displayed uh, or somewhere or whatever is happening it's not a violation court said that see 
privacy is a fundamental rights of a citizen of country though it can be uh, it can be monitored along with the requirements of the country but let's not pull it out of the fundamental system and ministry uh, ministry of it they appointed a panel of a committee to make data protection laws and later on right now our data protection laws right are in the parliament so thinking of from the government side there should be an alliance on the legitimate use of the data and the data privacy can be altered can be tweaked a little bit and there should be a proportional use of force uh, as per the crime that has been committed so the reason i have put this particular thoughts in your mind right now because now we are going to explore whatsapp what whatsapp's arguments are remember this that uh, government's argument is that they can use they can they should have a proportional use of force as per the requirement of the nation okay so now uh, let's uh, so you know that what uh, are the fundamentals of privacy what does it, what do you mean by privacy at the first end why privacy is important okay now let's jump on to the recent issue of information technology uh, rules 2021 uh, which are also known as intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics code okay and this is one of these guidelines that are totally into contention right now and there is a huge un cry right in every single newspaper printing at the first pages that in twitter police is going in whatsapp is doing a case and what else is happening around okay <clears throat> so what are these new rules for social media platform first of all uh, first of all you need to know about this is actually a composition of three pillars okay so users government and platforms so these are more of a service providers social media intermediaries are so are service providers to you which are providing you a platform in which you are going right there and you are giving up your thoughts you are coming up with your plans thoughts uh, posts that have whatever you want to create and this is what social media intermediaries mean about it then if they are intermediaries question comes in how responsible these intermediaries are okay and this is where the safe harbor provision of section 79 of it act comes in okay i'll tell you in a very easy language about what section 79 says it says that uh, every single person who every single company of social who um, who is a social intermediaries they are not liable if in case any uh, any of the person is posting any of the content online provided they are taking the basic steps to prevent online frauds and everything that is happening in so the idea is and by section 79 they get safe harbor provision that because of your acts because of you posting some unnecessary things online these social media companies don't suffer because because of the population that is around it and this is important along with whenever you are speaking about the uh, social media interme intermediaries the section 79 flows along with that okay uh, and this is a section 79 i have told you about because this is something the safe harbor provision is going to go away in next few minutes after the new, new rules that i have told you okay uh, so coming back uh, so whatsapp has 553 crores users in india remember this uh, and youtube have 44.8 facebook 41 crores instagram 21 crores twitter 1.75 crores uh, if you see if you if you'll just add up all of them you'll see that it's more than uh, 130 135 crores okay and that is not even our total population it's like more than our total population so it's a brilliant uh, thing to say that we are using social media and internet platforms in such a better way that uh, such a huge amount of uh, citizens of our country is are on the social media platform it's a brilliant it's actually it's a very good thing about it but at the same time Uh, now our government feels that you need to have some rules because the amount of uh, population that is going on on social media and that is why government came up with these intermediary rules which has been saying that uh, some regulations are needed to regulate this social media because they have a mass power to influence as well and with uh, cambridge analytica scandal has happened uh, in the past uh, in the united states where it was seen that how facebook can actually influence someone on on their ability to give their votes okay so after that government has actually realized what is actually the power of these social media and then along with that you have cases of women harassment defamation 
uh, terror planning, if, uh, if all of that is happening along, government felt that, see, we need to have some of the rules. And with these rules, they are planning to take away the safe harbor provisions, which are typically enjoyed under the IT Act by intermediaries. And now government is, uh, is saying that we are going to hold you more accountable for the content that is being displayed by the users as well. And government has made a significant distinction as well for the for the same of what uh, what is a social media intermediary and what is a significant social media intermediary. That is something I'm going to again tell you. Uh, yeah. So what government has done while making these basic rules is that they have divided social media intermediaries into two parts. One is significant social media intermediaries and second is social media intermediaries. So remember, intermediaries are these social media companies only who are providing you a platform. So the simple distinction is if you have more than 50 lakh users, you are significant so, so social media intermediary. And if you have less than 50 lakh users, your social media intermediaries with a population of 1.2 billion. Uh, I would say 50 lakh is not even a considerable number at all with a with a with this country of this size. OK, uh, now I'll tell you what is the difference between uh, SSMI and SMI. So the idea of SSMI is that they have some extra rules that they have to comply with. And this is where WhatsApp's trouble begins in because they fall into SSMI. And it's not even WhatsApp, I would say. It's WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram, Signal. Every single company that you are aware of, they fall into SSMI. Because getting 50 lakh users for such companies, they're getting more 50 lakh you. Uh, yeah, the whole, yeah, Zuckerberg gang that you're saying, Vishnu. Uh, so uh, SSMI, what they have to do, they have to up, uh, appoint a chief compliance officer who is responsible for ensuring compliance with the action rules. Again, this is not a problem at all. You can appoint a chief compliance officer. It's just a small amount that they'll be paying. Appointing a nodal contact person for 27 co uh, 24 seven coordination, again, it's accepted, it's fine, 24 seven nodal person is fine. Appointing a resident officer who will be performing function under grievance redressal mechanism. Again, they are putting up a person there so that they don't have to go all around under these corporate departments to get your data out, okay? So that is why they are saying that, let's set up a one person there right there, will be sitting and will be dealing with directly with us rather, we, rather than we taking appointments and and finding a relevant person and then the whole like, signature and all these processes are happening in. And then it says that you have to publish a monthly report and all of that. And fifth is the voluntary verification of identity. The troubling part. These are the five features I would say they're not at all, I would say a troubling part compared to what is a troubling part that I'm going to tell you now. Okay, it's come in and which is also the topic of uh, today's debate is that is uh, the new new social media policies that we have came up with will end up your privacy and how does it will affect your fundamental rights to right to privacy and right to right to expression right to freedom of your speech and expression this is where the debate comes in so whatsapp is saying that um, if we have to comply with uh, this particular policy of where government can intervene into into your chats basically one of the rules let me tell you that i have not written in there is that one of the rules uh, is that uh, government can ask these uh, social media intermediaries to give your chats to them so that uh, if there if they, at any point of time government feels like there is a threat is coming in they can directly ask for the chats before that also it was happening but it was happening with the judicial orders but now government is coming up with the laws only whenever they will give a call to them, they'll have to provide your chats. That is one part. Second is when it is happening, they're saying that this is a lot of forwarding of messages happening as fake news is coming up and there is a lot of pornography is getting circulated. We want to identify who is the originator of these messages. Say that there is a WhatsApp forward is going again and again, again, and again, again. They want to locate who was the first person who started with the, these messages. And this is where WhatsApp has all the problem. now. So WhatsApp says that, see, if we end up doing this particular thing, we'll have to break your end end to end encryptions. You must be knowing that there is an end to end encryption service that is being provided on WhatsApp and end to end encryption 
basic simply means that uh, if you're sending a message and I am getting a message from you, there will be no person in between who can read this message. This is a particular kind of a lock that is there in between two of us. And not even WhatsApp or Mark Zuckerberg itself can read our messages. And now when government says that if you, if you have to locate who is the originator of these, you'll have to break this end to end encryption. And where uh, this is where they'll have to break your end to end encryption. And this is where WhatsApp has jumped it as a mass surveillance, because this is one such thing, one such, I would say a selling point that all these social media intermediaries or messaging platforms have that we don't leak your data. We are secure. If you are chatting on WhatsApp, you have end to end encryption, your data is secured. It will never be hacked. So you can be assured, even if you're say, sending someone your bank account details, if you're sending someone your personal pictures as well. So, and this is what WhatsApp has termed it as government is planning for a mass surveillance in India. And, uh, and this has to be, the, and, uh, when it went to the IT minister, he said that, see, it is not going to affect common users, but, uh, how does it not affect common users is still in contention because along with that, he also said that uh, right to privacy is not an absolute right and government can intervene whenever they feel like there is a need to do it. Okay. And so it is subjected to reasonable restriction. We already know about it. And see, India is not the only country who has came up with this demand of traceability. In October, there was an application by UK, US, Japan, and India. They together, these four countries signed an agreement together to make a backdoor. Backdoor means uh, so that if in case any of these countries that together need some messages from each other countries, say if they're a national security threat uh, or of a te any terror activities, uh, these countries can contact each other directly and they will get their messages and they sign such agreements. So India has been a highest market for WhatsApp. You have seen that what is the amount of number that WhatsApp is holding with the Indian users. And that is why they are scared that we are going to lose a large number of users if this feature comes in, because we'll no longer be secure. People will no longer be willing to communicate on this particular platform. And there is a need to term this traceability as unconstitutional right away because it is taking your privacy, right to privacy, right to user privacy. And this law is going to affect every single person who is, who is into the borders of this country and who is using the smartphone. And WhatsApp feels that it is going to violate your human rights as well. Along with that, if you read the website, they have listed down that why they are supporting the encryption model right on the website, they have published it. Okay, yeah. This is a uh, rule 4.2. Uh, if you read 4.2 is one of that rule which exactly talks about that significant social intermediaries like WhatsApp, they have to enable a platform where government can trace the first originator of the message. And this is where the question comes in. Is this uh, the end of end-to-end -end encryption of Indi in India? Because that has been the basic promise that WhatsApp made us. And that is a basic philosophy that WhatsApp has been going around along in the whole world that see, we are a secure platforms. And now does this end to end going of end to end encryption, is it going to affect our right to privacy? Because say you're posting something on Twitter and government tells uh, Twitter in 36 hours, remove this content. How far you go and you'll put up your consent or your dissent on social media platforms now. And this is actually the point of concern with WhatsApp is happening. See encryption is a huge benefit. When you have this encryption end to end services, uh, whatever the consequences and or the dissenting opinions of encryption are, this has been one such technology uh, for which the abuse cases of abuse have been quite lesser compared to every other technology that has been uh, right there. And that is one of the reason every, every government wants to come up with de-encryption laws. Okay, so that is one of the reasons. So first of all, when you are seeing this uh, thing of which is in front of you, that you have to trace the first originator. This is what the problem of WhatsApp starts in, where your privacy issue starts in. Uh, your definition starts with breaking down of this term called first originator. So do you mean that he has to be into the territory of India first? That is not clear. Secondly, is WhatsApp is now also going to trace your locations uh, where this message is originating from? They don't do it until now. 
okay so they, they don't trace your location even though they have this send your location app but under the messaging service you don't get to know that directly automatically that where the person is sending you a message from you can say that okay you'll get to know that whether it's from plus 91 number not at all trust me this plus 91 can work in differently with foreigners having this plus 91 numbers they come to india they bring up that number people are doing the transaction uh, in mncs and a lot of people have plus 91 number so people people in uk germany it's quite common to have the plus 91 number so again this is going to fail uh, this is one thing is going to really be challenged uh, on the way so we are not talking about the laws of country here okay so whatsapp and signal the reason they don't have back doors is because they have signed a contract with you that this is how not it works this is how your policy is about and law uh, say law against murder doesn't protect a murder from happening so it only protects you if you're caught committing a crime right so you can't you can't have reasonable restrictions here of so that people don't commit a crime at all obviously it's one percent of population might be committing a crime but rest 99 percent of the population might suffer from the surveillance and this is where the end-to-end -end encryption comes again into the debate because it has been a uh, it has been a technology that is coming right from the decades okay and if you're having a back-end keys if you're creating a back-end keys to uh, open up the encryption model and take it take out the data for surveillancing they always remember that it's not only government that can open that door then if you have a door that in in your house you can put up locks definitely but that doesn't mean that lock will only be opened by government only you'll have professional hackers over the period of time and then this problem will go on and on and on further and this is why whatsapp is apprehensive about it so a lot of uh, middle grounds have to be negotiated into this one this is what has been the comment and if traceability was the key, don't you think that the countries like US, UK, Israel, Japan would have already done it? Uh, I'm not against that India becoming the first, uh, saying that India cannot become the first uh, country to come up with such laws. But remember that these are the algorithms. Okay, so these are the algorithm and why privacy is challenged right now. It's, it's a little bit of threat because these are international algorithms. So algorithms, they don't make it only for India. Like this is an Indian algorithm. This is how Indian WhatsApp will work in. This algorithm works at the international level. So for example, if they are changing the algorithm for India, they are create, basically creating the backdoor for the rest of the world as well, at least at some point of, the, of time. And that is why the international privacy gets challenged. And a lot of countries are looking at how this debate would go on in India, because this is going to change how privacy is looked from this point onwards. Okay. So that is one point. Uh, let me take how much time. Okay, just a few more minutes. Yeah. And now an interesting conversation uh, I'll tell you about. At one end, uh, WhatsApp is seeking to mandate a privacy policy where, uh, where it is going to share all the data with its parent company of Facebook. If you remember in February, we all had this notification on our WhatsApp that either update your WhatsApp or your WhatsApp is not going to work. And it said that, see, we are updating it because now we are going to share your information to Facebook for marketing and advertising purpose. Okay. And now on the other hand, WhatsApp is doing everything to not let these intermediary guidelines come in at the same planes, uh, in the same lines. What was happening in the February that government was saying that, see, if you are going to sell our data to Facebook, it is going to challenge the privacy of our citizens. And now the rules have changed. Now WhatsApp is saying that, see, it is going to challenge the privacy of your citizens. And government is saying that the reasonable restriction of privacy is absolutely normal. Okay, so this is actually a debate of government versus corporates is happening in, in which both at some point of time have proposed this particular uh, theory. And this is where we need to have a common ground where this debate needs to end that what kind of data can be shared when it can be shared and why encryption needs to be preserved or not to be preserved okay so government has already given a timeline to whatsapp regarding that february uh, thing as well that they need to comment to them by may 15th was the deadline and now we are waiting for the final announcement for them 
and the policy simply the policy or the february policy was that uh, they are going to share your uh, data with Facebook about whatever you are chatting on WhatsApp. Say you two friends are chatting with each other, saying that I am feeling like having uh, Maggie or Kit Kat. And then suddenly, when you are moving out of your home, you'll start getting these ads of Maggie and Kit Kat automatically. You'll not see those ads on WhatsApp. You'll see your ads on Facebook because now your conversation has been shared right away. And that algorithm will firstly show you Maggie. And that desire of Maggie and Kit Kat will go on and on and on. And then you'll go and buy a Kit Kat or a Maggie, and this is how business business happens. This is how they sell the advertisements, and this is how they manipulate it. Okay, so this it's all about the behavior. Your social media is linked with how you behave in the market. Okay, so there is a lot of middle ground. I have told you that has to be taken care of. There is a lot of loopholes have to be plugged in, and. Uh, another aspect, uh, the last aspect of it is the internationalization aspect, okay, uh, which is again a bit unclear about it. Say, suppose I'm talking to someone in Germany with my friend. Can you still trace it? Because now you have a citizen who is subjected to different set of laws, GDPR, General Data Protection Laws, uh, which governs the data protection laws in a, another way. So we are not functioning on the same legal system worldwide. So you would the, uh, so how would this also affect international communication is still a question because now if someone ends up, if government tries to uh, trace who is this originator and there are 15 people from European Union, what will be done uh, to them? Now, if this is a system that is coming up, how will your business communication transactions that is ha that are happening worldwide are going to be affected? Because remember, I told you the first thing. Your behavior changes when you know that you are having a surveillance. It changes for good, it changes for bad as well. You also lose at the same time the amount of dissenting opinions you may have. It's a country where we have grown up saying on the streets that we like this particular part of the country, we don't like this particular part, we like this policy, we don't like this policy. Okay, and this is how this has been actually one of the uh, beautiful parts of our country where we are free to speak about ourselves. And this is where the uh, little bit of apprehension is there about how is it going to affect a common person speaking about things that he wants to speak or the personal uh, moments that a person is sharing with another friend or, or a person along with those lines. Okay. So right now WhatsApp has sued the government of India. Uh, WhatsApp is actually pleading before the court right now that this should be termed as uh, unconstitutional and this should be removed because this funda privacy is a fundamental right, although it's not absolute. But uh, at the same time, in the Puttaswamy judgment of Aadhaar card, it said that government can definitely intervene into your privacy, but they can only intervene if there is an absolute, absolute need arises. And breaking of encryption should be the last resort not should be the first resort. Okay, I want to trace someone, I'll break the encryption right away. How many times will break the encryption? It should be the last resort, okay? Nothing else can happen along with these lines. We need to go away right to the encryption. That should be a last resort. What is happening right now, it is becoming a first resort, which is again a problem with WhatsApp, okay? Because it is going to affect their algorithm. Uh, another issue is that significant social media intermediaries, they have been asked to enable uh, artificial intelligence technology to take down, down the contents that are harmful. So they want uh, uh, these intermediaries to build a system where they can take down the content as soon as the intermediary uh, intermediaries AI system thinks that this is harmful. So they have to train in that in that particular way. But the question comes in, who define what is a harmful content? What do you mean by harmful content? It has not been defined anywhere. So think of it like simple, your dissenting opinions or something that you're writing against, say a minister or a government, or you're expressing your opinions about say any religious activity or whatever it is. Well, everything will be turned away, right? Because it is a harmful content in the, in the eyes of AI system. And what about the content that AI system is not able to uh, hold it off right away? Okay, because now there's no person is sitting in, AI is putting in whatever they want to. AI is definitely is getting better and better over the period of time, but relying upon the AI also brings in a liability issues that who holds the responsibility for AI? Because it's an algorithm, whom will you catch? Will you just go and lock the algorithm right in the jail? That see, this is the algorithm chart. 
I am locking it inside. No, definitely you'll go to the social media intermediaries, but then intermediary will say that, see, AI has its mind of its own. I can't do anything about it. What are you inviting in is you have to see about it. Okay, so that is another problem is hate news, hate speech, fake news, child pornography, etc. definitely have to be controlled. I'm totally into it, but we have to set up a limit. What is the limit of this when we say that uh, uh, this particular term of harmful content, even dissenting opinion and how does these things work along? And the last thing uh, is about the stringent deadlines. So the string, stringent deadlines are there, which says in 36 hours, you have to take down the content as soon as you get the orders. Now you're getting the orders right from the government. Before that, you were getting orders from courts. So it was an assumption that whenever you get an order from the court, they do this analysis of whether the order that they are giving it to you, whether it has uh, pros, cons, and whether it's a content is actually right or not. And it has to be taken down. That was fine. But now you're getting orders right from a person who might not be technically sound in understanding that subject matter. And you have to take it down in 36 hours. That is a stringent deadline because there's not much scope of analysis. We are like, one and a half day to do that. Second is providing information to law enforcement agency 72 hours, uh, complying with requ requests to remove sexual content in 24 hours. It's absolutely good. And redressal by grievance officer in 15 days. So these uh, uh, are the few of these deadlines that are creating it bit, uh, a bit of an issue into that space. Okay, so these are the timelines. And this is actually, I hope you have understood about what's a, what is the contention is going uh, about the WhatsApp, why WhatsApp is uh, privacy is at stake, why WhatsApp is arguing that your privacy is at stake. And it's not just with WhatsApp only. Remember, it's all the social media platform right there having the same problem. Uh, Facebook has said that, okay, we'll comply with whatever we can comply, although WhatsApp is also owned by it. But they have also said, see, we cannot absolutely comply with everything that has been written because uh, these things needs to be discussed right at the round table of how, what is the feasibility of it. Uh, so that is all. Uh, I think I'm about uh, exactly this was the time I was uh, about given to me. And if you have any questions, you can shoot it up. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening so patient, patiently. Uh, Aditya, over to you. Hi, yeah, so thanks for that lovely uh, session. Uh, we will be taking a few questions which the students have already posted uh, while registering with us. Mm -hmm. All right, so Divya asks, how does the new policy affect user against their fundamental rights? Uh, their fundamental right is the, basically the right to privacy, which has been enshrined to you by the Indian constitution. And when your privacy is gone, say someone is actually looking over your messages, and say if there is a surveillance is going on, okay, and government wants to trace who is the real originator, they are tracing about your five lakh, uh, five lakh messages that have been coming up, and then this is where you might not be comfortable with your chat being disclosed with the government officials with any single authority. There might be some of those transactions. There might be some of your personal details, personal chats. What what is the extent of those uh, exploration of those chats is again undefined. This is where uh, your personal rights to right to privacy can get challenged. It definitely it gets challenged. Right, right. Because not every single person might be a <laughs> criminal into that activity. And 50 million forwards have been done, not 50 million people might be a criminal. This might be, there can be one single person who started this particular thing. Right. Uh, is there any connection between the IT rules and the uh, new WhatsApp policy uh, is what Gordon asks. Definitely. These are the whole idea of uh, the WhatsApp policy. They are changing it is because of the IT rules. Every single uh, policy that is that every social media intermediary they follow is based on the country's uh, basic rules. First of all, of what guidelines that they have to follow at the basic levels. So that is one of the reason why WhatsApp is actually arguing that, see, you'll make us follow it at the end. We know that. So let us fight how much we can fight and we can get it changed. All right. Uh, there's another question by Astha Parab. Career opportunities in law if I want to settle abroad? Uh, see, if you have to settle abroad, uh, 
this is the one question that a lot of students ask me all the time and see there are career opportunities everywhere in every single field there's not such one single field i would say there are not career opportunities and you can see that how many indians are there all around the world with the top positions as well to the lower positions uh, when you are doing it law you definitely remember that law is always a jurisdiction based degree okay so you are whenever you are enrolled into a legal system you study a single legal system of every single country first and this is how you become a lawyer for that one country over the period of time if you really want to practice somewhere as a lawyer you have to take uh, some of the exams or you have to take a law degree of another nation as well at times you have to do jd or you have to do some juris doctorate or whatever it is that is a uh, compliance issues of uh, compliance rules of any other country but if it's not just about the practicing if you want to work as a corporate person or as a corporate advisor definitely it is possible people get hired with the international law firms you work as a corporate advisor if you want to come into academics academics is borderless you don't have any borders when it comes to academia you can revolve around anywhere so definitely you can you can it's it's scope is wide if you can uh, yeah right uh all right let's take a few questions on the chat box as right. well yeah so uh views on uh, edward snowden and uh, the uh, whistle blowing operation on the breach of privacy by the us agencies uh well see uh it it is it's, it's again been the, been the case of the national security if you ever uh, if you have if you have studied the case of the edward uh, snowden and his breach of privacy was done by the us agencies they again us agencies had the legitimate reasons that it is for the national security and this is where the problem i also told you about see whenever you are telling about what is a problem with national security it is very well you can define about what all it covers into the national security definitely terror activities or whatever it is and they have done it okay but uh, when you're saying that every harmful content has to be taken down which is the case of you can say nar laws how would you define harmful content harmful content can simply be that i am writing that i don't like dominos pizza and it should be removed from the country and they are doing something like that which is not actually the case so you have to define the harmful content when it comes to edward snowden case uh, about his uh, operations that he was doing definitely he was operating somewhere against the us agencies uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, i would say a lot of politics is also involved in this case uh, you can understand how it is working along because he has always revealed things against uh, against uh, against the united states and how they can also breach into any person's privacy this is also one of the debate that has led to creation of one of their new law as well which is called california consumer privacy act called ccpa okay so do go through this once if you want uh, one is gdpr another one is ccpa gdpr is for european union USA has came up with CCPA California Consumer Privacy Act and it is much more stringent that gives much more protection to the US nationals right now it is only implemented in California it is one of the classic acts that i have ever seen i have ever gone through uh but you will get the flavor of it when you will read about it that why that act came in and how this particular case has also been dealt by that that act because remember in California what exists your facebook your whatsapp your signal every single head office exist in california and that is why they wanted to have such uh, such legal system right in place right a uh, another interesting question uh, by an anonymous attendee in fact can a suit be brought against the government if they wrongfully remove a post one which had published on one of these social media platforms suit and definitely suit can be brought against government if uh, if but how will you prove that government have uh, has asked you to remove this particular post because one the procedure is that they have to inform the social media intermediaries that this post is definitely going against there is a it's not it doesn't happen in that way right now that you sing, simply gives a call and just remove it right now how it happens it's it happens in a very good way it you get a court order to remove remove some content and after that court order it has been written that why this particular post is a problem and they get it removed that is one pro procedure second is that if you feel that this post is harmful you can report it right away and if whatsapp or sorry if facebook feels the same they remove it okay they remove it right from their end if they don't they tell you that we don't find it comfortable 
and this is what happens if government takes it down you can take a case against the social media intermediary definitely that they have removed your post and into that there can be parties that would be involved over the period of time and even they will say that we have got the government order for the sake right uh what about the punishments which you get for sending illegal messages on social media uh can you tell me what do you mean by illegal messages first of all uh i so, want to know what is illegal yeah exactly so i, I think the anonymous attendee uh, wants to know what if it, uh, what if it's a, a, a message which is uh, against uh, the public policy or yeah. the i'll tell you simply uh, someone is sending you uh, on facebook messenger someone is trying to send you a porn link okay and that is exactly against the public policy in india so what has been told it's not like these social media intermediaries right now they don't have any liabilities at all and they can do whatever they want there is a social intermediary rules that are already into place it's in of social intermediary sorry intermediary rules of 2011 which says a basic cognizance has to be taken by every single authority of a social intermediaries that they have to take it down i can give you a few examples one you must have seen that whatsapp only limits you to make five forwards now okay second try sending any porn link to for your friend and it will not get sent it will say that this uh, kind of websites are not allowed to be sent via chat platforms in facebook this is a type of things that they have taken it's not like uh, whatsapp and facebook are they don't want to work around with it they are working around with it but they they definitely they they are bound by rules right right all right uh, i think we have more or less covered uh, every question every pertinent question uh, let me paraphrase my statement but yes uh, uh, more or less we have covered uh, each and everything so superb uh, session full do you want to add something uh, if you have any questions for uh, uh, my colleague as well regarding ups you can also ask uh, about that as well right right uh, in right that he has been uh, here if any process related questions or something yes of course so anything with respect to ups all of it uh, you that also you can put it down on the chat box uh, else also uh, thanks all of you for joining uh, pulkit uh, you have made our day today uh, it was simply amazing just to hear you speak and explain uh, through the uh, presentation and i hope uh, each and every one of us have uh, enjoyed the session uh, just the way i have I've been listening to you uh, since you you began and uh, it uh, is very useful since uh, everything everyone is becoming tech savvy and this is something which is very pertinent and very basic True. so that way is uh, privacy is important uh, social media platforms is important these are inevitable uh, quint essentials of our lives and they simply cannot be ignored so of course this uh, is a session which everybody uh, and that's why uh, everyone liked it as well i am hoping everybody liked it Uh, so please uh, give a feedback on of the session on the chat box before going also if you have any uh, query with respect to alsat which gives you an entry into ups dehradun uh, go ahead uh, and ask uh, or write it down on the chat box itself yes pulkit do you want to add something uh, that's all from uh, my end thank you so much for being such an attentive listeners and uh, i loved your questions that you have came up with uh if anyone uh, have any other questions you can uh, connect with aditya and maybe he can tell me later on sure sure we'll do that we'll definitely do that all right guys thanks a lot i would want you guys to write the feedback before leaving the session on the chat box so that we also understand uh, how do we improve Uh, as a team pms has been doing a lot of activities be it ignite inside or initiate activities it is that we also need your guidance at times to improve ourselves as well so we have been bringing professors we have been we have been bringing students uh, as a part of the inside series of course we have brought uh, uh, pulkit who had been an amazing amazing presenter and talked about whatsapp policy uh, but yes we would require you to go ahead and give your feedback on the chat box before leaving All right. Thanks a lot, Pulkit. Uh, it was lovely to hear you uh, speak. Uh, hope we meet sometime. Sure. Right. All right. All the best, Pulkit. All the best, guys. Take care.